Born on April 21, 1926, Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor entered the world an unsuspecting future queen. A time of peace following the Great War, the world was blissfully unaware of the seismic shifts on the horizon. Young Elizabeth, the first child of Duke and Duchess of York, later known as King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, spent her early years in the loving company of her family, receiving an education that was steeped in history and tradition. However, the winds of change blew in 1936 when her uncle, King Edward VIII, chose love over duty and abdicated the throne. This unanticipated event thrust her father into the role of king, thus altering the trajectory of Elizabeth's life. A once distant prospect was now a stark reality. Elizabeth was now the heiress presumptive to the throne. A twist of fate had changed the course of young Elizabeth's life, setting her on a path to become Britain's longest reigning monarch. 1952 brought not only the death of her father, King George VI, but also Elizabeth's ascension to the throne. On a day etched in our collective memory, the 2nd of June, a young Elizabeth, just 25 years old, was crowned Queen in an age-old ceremony held at Westminster Abbey. The nation held its breath as she took the sacred oath, becoming the 39th sovereign to be crowned at the Abbey since William the Conqueror in 1066. The public's response was overwhelming, with millions lining the procession route, their faces alight with excitement and anticipation. The air was thick with hope, the start of a new era under a young, vibrant monarch, a reign that would span decades, shaping and being shaped by the times. Thus began the reign of Queen Elizabeth II, a reign that would witness tremendous change. In 1965, Queen Elizabeth made a historic visit to West Germany, the first by a British monarch since 1913. This was a time when the scars of the Second World War were still visible, and the memory of it was fresh in people's minds. Yet, Queen Elizabeth, with her innate grace and diplomacy, managed to bridge the divide. She was there not as a conqueror, but as a symbol of peace and reconciliation. Her visit was a testament to the healing power of time and the necessity of forgiveness in international relations. She was welcomed with open arms by the German people who saw in her a beacon of hope and unity. Her meetings with German leaders also helped to strengthen the bonds between the two nations. This visit marked a turning point in British-German relations, reflecting the Queen's commitment to peace and diplomacy. It was a powerful statement that highlighted the importance of unity and understanding in a divided world. A 1966 brought with it the Aberfan disaster, a dark day in Welsh history. In the heart of the mining village Aberfan, a catastrophic collapse of a colliery spoil tip killed 116 children and 28 adults. This tragedy shook the nation and indeed the Queen herself. Elizabeth was initially advised not to visit the disaster site, a decision she later publicly regretted, calling it her biggest mistake. However, eight days after the incident, she arrived in Aberfan. Her presence, her words of comfort and genuine emotion were a beacon of hope in a time of profound grief. The Aberfan tragedy marked a transformative point in the Queen's reign. It brought her closer to her subjects, revealing her not just as a monarch, but as a mother and a compassionate human being. Her response, imbued with empathy and grace, illustrated her deep sense of duty and care for her people. In 1970, Queen Elizabeth introduced a new royal tradition, the walkabout. This event marked a significant shift in the monarchy's relationship with the public. Prior to this, interactions between the royals and their subjects were largely formal and distant, but the Queen, always one for innovation, decided to change this. She stepped out of her car during a visit to Australia and New Zealand and walked among the crowd, shaking hands, exchanging pleasantries and listening to the concerns of everyday citizens. The move was unprecedented, but it resonated deeply with the public. The walkabout was more than just a stroll among the masses, it was a statement. It demonstrated that the Queen was not just a figurehead, but a woman of the people. She was approachable, personable, and genuinely interested in her subjects' lives. This simple act of walking among the people and listening to their stories changed the way the monarchy was perceived forever. The walkabout became a symbol of the Queen's approachable and modern monarchy. 
1992, a year Queen Elizabeth would later refer to as her Annus Horribilis. This Latin phrase, meaning horrible year, perfectly encapsulates the trials and tribulations the Queen and her family faced. This was a year marred by scandal and heartbreak as the marital troubles of Prince Charles, Prince Andrew and Princess Anne unfolded before the public eye. Prince Charles and Princess Diana's separation was a headline-grabbing affair, with their private troubles becoming a public spectacle. Prince Andrew and his wife, Sarah Ferguson, also announced their separation in this year, adding to the royal family's woes. Princess Anne, not to be left out of this tumultuous year, divorced her husband, Captain Mark Phillips. Throughout it all, Queen Elizabeth remained a pillar of strength. She navigated these public crises with grace and resilience, never faltering in her duty to the crown. Despite personal and public trials, Queen Elizabeth remained steadfast, guiding her family and her nation. In 1997, the world was rocked by the tragic death of Princess Diana. A beacon of compassion and the people's princess, her loss was deeply felt across the globe. The heart of the British monarchy was dealt a severe blow. Queen Elizabeth, as both a monarch and a grandmother, found herself at the centre of this tragedy. With a nation in shock, she was faced with the delicate task of mourning the loss of the mother of her grandchildren, while also acknowledging the public's grief. In the immediate aftermath of the tragedy, the Queen chose to retreat to Balmoral to provide Prince William and Prince Harry with a safe haven away from the prying eyes of the world. This decision was met with criticism from the public, who were yearning for a display of shared grief from their monarch. However, with the passing days, the Queen recognised the need to bridge the gap between the monarchy and the people. She made the unprecedented decision to address the nation in a live broadcast, a first in her reign. Her words were heartfelt expressing her own sadness at the loss of Diana and praising her for her kindness and dedication to humanitarian causes. The Queen's actions in the wake of Diana's death were a turning point for the monarchy. She showed a willingness to adapt and break with tradition, acknowledging the need for a more modern, accessible monarchy. This event marked a shift in the relationship between the monarchy and the public, paving the way for a new era of openness and transparency. In the face of profound loss, Queen Elizabeth navigated a nation in mourning, demonstrating her strength and resilience. Through her actions, she showed not just her capacity as a leader, but also her humanity, reminding us that at the heart of the monarchy, there lies a family, dealing with their grief, just like everyone else. In the later years of her reign, Queen Elizabeth continued to make history. In 2011, she made a groundbreaking visit to Ireland, a trip that had not been undertaken by a British monarch for a century. It was a visit that spoke volumes about the Queen's dedication to peace and reconciliation. This historic journey to Ireland was not just a first for a British monarch, but also a symbol of the healing and progress that had taken place since the tumultuous times of the Troubles. Queen Elizabeth's presence in Ireland was a testament to the power of diplomacy, forgiveness and the forging of new beginnings. Fast forward a decade to the year 2021, and we find the Queen facing a personal loss that shook not only the monarchy, but the world. Her beloved husband of 73 years, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, passed away. His death marked the end of an era, and the Queen had to navigate this profound loss under the public eye. Despite her personal grief, Queen Elizabeth demonstrated remarkable resilience. Even in mourning, she continued to carry out her royal duties with the grace and dignity that have defined her reign. She was the epitome of strength, setting an example of dedication and commitment to her role, no matter the personal cost. The death of Prince Philip was a stark reminder of the Queen's enduring resilience through the highs and lows of her reign. It was a testament to her unwavering dedication to her country, even in the face of personal loss. As she navigated this period of mourning, she remained a pillar of strength for her family, her nation and indeed the world. Through triumph and tragedy, Queen Elizabeth's reign has been marked by strength, resilience and an unwavering dedication to her country.